this is another interesting little module. It's called uh, DF player and it's basically a small compact mp3 player. You load your tracks onto an SD card which you slide into this socket and uh, then through a, a serial interface you control the module to play the tracks. It supports uh, FAT16 as well as FAT32 for SD cards and I think it also supports USB flash drives up to 32 gigs but you would need to connect a uh, USB socket to these uh, pin headers. The serial interface supports different commands that will allow you among other things to play, pause or skip tracks to navigate the uh, storage file system, to adjust volume or to query various settings stored in the device. One particular feature that I find interesting is related to the two AD key pins which seems to be ADC pins and through different values, external resistors, you can connect up to 20 external switches and uh, read each individual switch to determine when it was pressed based on the voltage generated from each resistor. And uh, with those 20 uh, external keys and uh, some configurations sent to the device, you can basically control all of those functions through harder keys instead of uh, software commands. They also mentioned the uh, module has this advertising feature where uh, you could play a certain file over the current playing music, which I guess it's another awesome feature that might be useful in certain applications. And all of these features are packed into this, well, let's call it uh, an ASIC but it's probably a microcontroller inside. And I believe this other chip right here, it's a, a small uh, amplifier. I'll definitely have a play with this uh, module and uh, an Arduino. I'm thinking one could easily integrate something like this into a project where you need some uh, voice feedback. You could have those messages pre-recorded and stored on an SD card and by using an Arduino or any microcontroller, you could call and play those messages when needed. If you are interested in getting one, there will be a link in the description below. This is another interesting little module, which is used to test these uh, ultrasonic sensor modules. This thing, as we can see, has a, a three digit seven segment display. We see a tiny microcontroller on the PCB and the pin header for attaching one of these ultrasonic sensor modules. The idea is you connect an ultrasonic sensor module and you get the distance readout in meters on this seven segment display. The way it works is the small micro we see here issues a, um, a pulse on the trigger pin of these uh, sensor modules and then it measures the delay between that initial trigger pulse and the received echo. Then, through a mathematical equation, it takes into account the speed of sound in air and it can measure the distance to target. Uh, I have this ruler right here on the bench and I'm going to uh, zoom in. The ruler actually measures the distance between this wall in front of, uh, at the end of the bench and I'm going to position the, the sensor on the, the ruler and check its uh, accuracy. So this one is a new S015 uh, ultrasonic sensor module. Let's connect and see how, how it works. So the sensor module goes on this header. And then on this side, we can apply power either through this GST connector on, or on this pin header. It doesn't have any um, markings for its voltage input, but I know that these um, STC microcontrollers they usually run at 5 volts and I don't see any regulation happening on this board so I'm pretty sure we'll be alright if I supply it with uh, just 5 volts from my bench supply. Yep, and uh, it just works. We can see it updating as I, as I change the, the distance from the uh, wall behind the bench. And by using this ruler, we'll be able to check its accuracy. It's just a, a simple flat wall inside, in front of the sensor. 
So right now I have the uh, sensors placed at the 25 centimeters mark, which is about, uh, I don't know, 10 inches. And we see the uh, sensor is reading uh, 27 centimeters on the display. Let's go at 15 centimeters. Yep, yeah, and the uh, module is reading 17. And let's also check 30, centi 30 centimeters. The module is reading 32. So it seems like it's always uh, reading uh, an extra one or two centimeters. Or maybe it does compensate for the height of the uh, of these ultrasonic transducers because I was thinking it it measures right from this outer edge, but it might be compensating. It might be compensating for that. And if I place the the actual PCB at the 30 centimeters mark, we do, we do get a closer value of 31 on the the readout. This module also appears to have TX and RX marked on this side. So it could be outputting serial data as well. That could be very useful if um, I want to get that data and process it in some way. You, want, you don't have to deal with the actual measurement and the math. You just get your distance uh, possibly as ASCII. So let me just connect this thing through a uh, USB to serial adapter to my computer and see if, if we get an, anything out of it. And I'm back. Unfortunately, I'm not getting anything on those pins. I have tried sending various commands with no luck. Maybe it's missing some software inside the microcontroller to uh, also send the distance on the serial port. Anyway, this module is intended for testing these uh, kind of ultrasonic uh, sensor modules. And I have shown that uh, it's working. So if you're interested in getting something like this, there will be a link in the description below. This one is a power supply kit. And uh, I do know I have purchased several kits and I haven't managed to assemble any in the past few months. And yet I keep ordering them. Well, when I see something I like or something I think I could use at some point in some random project, I usually go ahead and order it. That is also the case with this power supply kit. Uh, it has a wide input range of uh, 5 to 24 volts DC and it outputs these five rails as we can see right here marked on the PCB. Um, it's capable of sourcing 300 milliamps on each of these rails which are plus 12 volts, minus 12 volts, plus 5 volts, minus 5 volts and the 3.3 volts rail. And uh, as it's typical with these kits ordered from Banggood, you don't get any schematics or instructions, just the PCB plus uh, components. You'll have to use the um, provided seal screen labels and identify all your parts visually or maybe with a multimeter before soldering them in. This one is a mix of uh, surface mount plus through hole parts, so it might be interesting to watch me assemble it and maybe give some hints on what I'm doing. Originally, I think the kit was designed to be used as a power supply for another product, a DDS function generator that you can also purchase on Banggood, which requires these uh, plus 5 volts, plus or minus uh, 12 volts to, to work. A link for this uh, power supply as well as the DDS function generator will be in the description below. Here I got these lithium battery charging modules. It's incredible how cheap you can get these uh, modules. I paid $2.50 for 5 pieces with free shipping from Banggood. So that makes it about 50 cents a piece including shipping. That's incredible. These are based on the TP4056 Chinese IC, which can do up to 1 amp, but can also be adjusted to less through an external set resistor. As we can see, they sent my five modules as a panel. This is how they actually get manufactured, because it would be highly impractical to handle individual uh, small modules through the manufacturing line. 
and uh, this way a bunch of these uh, small modules get panelized into a larger design which is easier and more economical to put through a manufacturing process and as we can see they have these uh, marked these these are called um, v scores and it's basically a, a blade that comes into into the pcb and makes a fine cut that you can easily break away together with this uh, other mail item which is a four-way 18650 battery holder i will build a project soon so stay subscribed to find out more links for both of these will be in the description below here we have a pair of these uh, test cables red and black they have four millimeter banana plugs molded on one end these are not uh, the shrouded type uh, and we have uh, these alligator clips on the other end these look like uh, decent alligator clips but let's compare them to our next item and you have probably seen me previously show these uh, these nicer alligator clips so the ones that came with the with the test leads seem to have a nicer um, soft silicon type insulation material well these have a harder plastic shell but i think these second ones have better metal work at least right here in the front we can see clearly the one on the right just has more um, precise machining as i've shown in previous episode these have um, four millimeter banana plugs and you can use them just like this these test leads do seem to be of uh, reasonable quality they uh, i think they are silicon wires although i'm not sure there is no marking on them they are one meter in length and although they are not as high quality as the ones you can make yourself they are probably okay for most jobs and uh, okay for their price of uh, four dollars with free shipping in here i have a pair of these uh, four millimeter binding posts As we can see these are the shrouded type and they look to be reasonable quality also they look like they could uh, handle quite a lot of uh, current being put through them they are made of plastic and uh, you secure them to your front panel using a metal nut over this plastic thread so you do need to be careful not to break the thread so if you plan on using uh, shrouded banana plugs like these uh, test leads I have here, you'll need this type of uh, binding post to connect to them. For comparison, here is another type of uh, binding post. This one is not for shrouded connectors and if you have shrouded banana plugs, you will not be able to connect to this type of uh, binding post. So there is a link in the description which will take you to a selection of these um, shrouded binding posts so you can pick the one that meets your needs best in here i have 20 pieces of these green four millimeter banana sockets they were very cheap on ebay just one dollar and fifty cents free shipping for these 20 pieces pack i was thinking i should build a passive uh, resistive dummy load using a large heatsink together with some uh, wire wound power resistors and I was thinking I could link each resistor pin to one of these 4mm sockets so that I can use beefy banana jack leads to connect the load to whatever I need testing. And also that will allow me to, um, for example, connect more of those resistors in parallel or in series depending on my requirements. But you could use these for anything really and they are uh, really cheap and uh, useful. Same as in the uh, last in the mail video, I got some more of these um, cob LEDs. These are 10 watt version, 900 lumens, cold white. They work at 12 volts, uh, they should pull about 900 milliamps. And the idea is I want to experiment with driving and cooling uh, different kinds of LEDs to get a better sense of uh, what would be needed if I were to build my own ceiling LED lamp based on these uh, uh, LED modules. They are very cheap, just $1.60 with free shipping from banggood.com and you can find them in a, a variety of color temperatures. 
Next up, I have a set of uh, common mode chokes. These are uh, 5 milli Henry's. They are 7 by 8 millimeters and I think uh, 10 millimeters pin pitch. You can get them in uh, various inductance values, but if you've ever seen uh, an AC to DC switch mode power supply, chances are it had one of these on the input for filtering. These are good as replacements because occasionally you might find the blown one and this might happen due to an overcurrent condition on the power supply or you can use them when designing your own power supply which I intend to do at some point. Here I have this simple and probably worst quality possible battery pack case. <laughs> well you see it also comes with this keychain ring that should be really really useful and um, it comes uh, ready with the uh, boost and charge module inside let's do a quick test i have this 18650 cell i will insert the battery i also have my dummy load with this uh, usb plug with short leads to avoid any voltage drop i'm going to plug this into the uh, battery pack i would like to test the one amp capability from this um, power bank um, and check if the 5 volt rail stays within the accepted tolerance margin for USB which is plus or minus 0.25 volts while pulling one amp from the battery pack. So let's start the dummy load, it is set to one amp. Yeah, so it looks like uh, our voltage is 4.88 volts. So that is within the uh, allowed margin for um, USB specifications. So yeah, this, uh, this power bank does perform as uh, advertised. These days you can buy much better power banks, higher capacity, better specs for a very few dollars. I even have a few which are um, good quality from Anchor. The only reason I got this one is because I can easily pop in a new cell inside. Uh, I don't have to wait for it to, to charge normally through its uh, charging port and because I want to keep it just for testing USB devices on my bench. Nothing fancy, just a simple USB port that will give me one amp and this thing was only $1.60 on Banggood. You will find the link in the description below. This one being such a, a small item I almost accidentally threw away while I was cleaning up the bench. It's a uh, it has a particularly useful function, this item. It's an M3 screw tap and it's used to make threads into various materials. Well, at least various soft materials. You can find these in different sizes. In my case, I get the uh, M3 metric size because I plan on tapping some threads into an aluminum heat sink. I never did it before, so it will be the first time I'm using this kind of tool. Hopefully, I'll get it right. There is one thing I am missing though, and that is a T-shaped tool that um, can grab this drill and act as a lever to help me manually rotate it and create the thread. I have ordered one and it's on its way, but that means 4 weeks deliver time to Romania. There will be a link in the description for this item, I got it from banggood.com. Continuing in the same tooling category, I got these cutting discs for my Dremel tool. These are 35 millimeter ones, but you can get them in various sizes. These were only $3.50 for 10 pieces, so I don't expect them to last very much. Their quality probably matches the price, but they should be fine for small jobs into softer metals. What I had in mind when I ordered them was the back panel for my dummy load enclosure. It's just a small steel plate, I think 2 millimeter thick, and I would like to cut some slots for the cooling fans that will go in there. Hopefully I can get that job done with these cutting discs and there will be a link in the description with the selection of these uh, cutting discs. That was all for today. Don't forget to subscribe and like this video because it keeps me motivated to produce more content like this. As usual, links for all the products will be in the description below and if you'd like to say anything, you can do that in the comment section below. See you next time.